Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution Show, a look at 2023. Well, hello, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you saw and know. Appreciate you tuning in for this new year. Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a great holiday season. And this episode is going to talk about 2023, about what's coming up for 2023, and some thoughts about this. Now, I've based my discussion around an article that came out recently from Clean Technica, Technica, excuse me, so I want to give them credit where credit is due, but I've added some, some stuff of my own here and some thoughts and opinions, so let me get right into it. Now, 2022 was a great year for plug-in vehicle growth and adoption. Now, the final numbers are not out yet but I can estimate that they should be around the 10 million unit mark, which would be up from about 7 million in 2021. The 2022 numbers could have been higher if not from the perfect storm happening. Now, what I mean by that is the continued logistics bottlenecks, spin up of most of the major OEMs for EV production, and the inking and insourcing of battery production, and more manufacturers going after the limited battery supply chain, at least as it is today. Now, I believe the consumer demand for plug-ins is very high and will only continue to grow. So let's see what 2023 can bring to the EV marketplace. Is 2023 finally the year of the electric car? Well, multiple experts think it is. I would tend to agree that this is the year EVs go mainstream. Now, one could argue that they kind of went mainstream in 2022, with the increase in new EV models available and announcements globally. Hey, even more ads on TV promoting EVs came out. However, 2023 could be the electric car tipping point. A good definition of a tipping point is the moment of critical mass, the threshold, the boiling point, and many link this to consumer ideas, products, messages, and behaviors that spread like viruses do. According to Kelly Blue Book, electric car sales accounted for 5.6% of all new vehicles sold in the United States in 2022. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but as recently as 2019, that figure was just 1.4%. Now, based on the experience in other global markets, particularly Norway, 5% market share seems to be an important tipping point for wider adoption. This is according to Bloomberg NEF. Other markets, such as China and Europe overall, have shown similar trends. So it seems that this 5% threshold marks the point where EV sales really take off and is at the level at which they begin to seem normal. Now, the overall U.S. market share for Hyundai, for example, is about the same as the market share for electric vehicles. This is according to Cox Automotive. And we know that buying a Hyundai doesn't seem like anything weird or unusual. It seems really normal. So it's getting to be the same now for electric vehicles. It's no longer uncommon to see them on the roads which makes it easier for consumers to consider getting one. I bet you'll be pressed to not see a Tesla Model 3 on your way to work every day. So the more people start driving electric cars, the more normal they will seem. And they are. Even commercial vehicles may contribute to the trend, like those all-electric Amazon and UPS delivery vans. On another note, some people describe where the plug-in market is at a little differently. Instead of talking about tipping points, they refer to something known as the S-curve, a logarithmic graph that reflects change over time. And I'm sure you've heard this before. The early stage is nearly flat as the early adopters try something new. Those new Leaf buyers and Tesla Model S buyers and Mitsubishi IMEV buyers from the 2010s and 2012s. In the second stage, however, growth rises rapidly 
as public acceptance of a new idea takes hold. And that's where many, including me, thinks the market for electric cars is right now. Nearly every automaker, be it a legacy OEM or a startup, unveiled a slew of impressive EVs for the 2023 market last year. If you've been watching my shows, you've seen these announcements. Now, most of them were geared towards the luxury consumers. Of course, we know that. However, within the next year or two, we'll start seeing even more new models come out that are priced much more affordably. That cost parity is going to come in the next few years. And in addition, expect the sheer number of new EVs on the market to pick up as new factories come online. McKinsey predicts legacy automakers and EV startups will produce up to 400 new models by the end of this year. To me, that sounds a bit high, but taking all the markets into consideration, like China, it is plausible. In fact, many are quite sure that electric car models from Asia are coming, and they are coming very soon. For example, go to Norway, where cars from BYD are all over the place. Chinese car companies like MG see EVs as a way to crack the Western automotive markets once and for all. The BYD Auto 3 is also popular in other countries, like Australia. Hyundai Motor Group already has some great electric cars such as the Hyundai Kona EV, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia Niro EV, the Kia Soul EV, and the Kia EV6. Then there is the Genesis brand with the GV60, GV70 Electrified, and Electrified G80. But more are coming this year too, such as the revealed Hyundai Ioniq 6 and the revolutionary Hyundai Ioniq 7. So what can we expect for the EV market this year? There should be a strong surge in electric car sales in the first quarter in the United States as the new federal EV tax credit kicks in, particularly for less expensive cars like the Chevy Bolt and the EUV Twins, which, by the way, are two, in my opinion, are two of the best valued battery electric vehicles in North American market that you can get today. And sticking with GM, the game-changing Equinox EV And I mean game-changing in the fact that it is a very capable all-electric with a starting MSRP of $30,000 US or $35,000 Canadian. This should really help to spur on adoption on our side of the pond. My hope, however, is that GM has enough production capacity to meet the demand with this and all their announced new battery electric vehicles coming this year. We will see. As for other OEMs, Tesla will continue to crank up production numbers this year, with their goal of hitting 5 million units a year by 2030 looking really good right now. Ford hopefully can increase production of their game-changing F-150 Lightning pickup truck, and it would be nice if Stellantis can actually offer an all-electric for the marketplace this year. Let's wait and see. Now, for sure, we will see startups increase production numbers. Those like Rivian and others should hit the road this year. Offerings from Lordstown, Aptera, Canoe, and even Indy EV, just to name a few. Also, some of those new players, like VinFast, should make some substantial deliveries this year in many markets. Unfortunately, I don't expect much from Toyota, Lexus, Honda, Mazda, and Subaru on the all-electric fronts this year, other than hopefully many more deliveries of the BZ4X, the RZ450E, and the Solterra battery electric vehicles in 2023. Now, I would be remiss if I did not also include the Germans in my viewpoints, as BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, Porsche, and the rest of the VW group continue to launch more all-electric offerings and increase production numbers while spinning up new plants. And we should see more models come from them this year as well. And of course, let's not forget China, the powerhouse for EV adoption. They should continue to lead the marketplace at 40% plus plug-in sales, with their ever-increasing model count from dozens of their OEMs. Now, it is also expected that the tidal wave of money available from many national governments, like the United States and Canada, 
to expand cross-country charging infrastructures, will finally make people forget about range anxiety and start enjoying driving on electrons instead of hydrocarbons. In closing, I'll go out on a limb now and predict that the plug-in market will grow by 20%, maybe even more, this year. And we should end up with about 12 to 14 million consumer-based light-duty vehicles that are plug-ins sold this year. Tipping points and S-curves, they both send the same message. The electric car era is here at long last. Hopefully, when the history books are written, 2023 is the year they will say the EV revolution was won. And that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it insightful and thoughtful. And let's watch the market together and see what happens in 2023. Thank you for all those who watch me on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It would mean a lot. Also, I'm all very appreciative for my ongoing Patreon supporters. If you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, you can check out the link below and see how that is. This should be a busy year. I'll be getting out and about a lot more. So stay tuned to the Levy Marketplace. Keep watching my channel. And everybody stay safe. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye. I can't do nothing with you.